Well, it was a beautiful and sunny day here in California today. Kind of cool and breezy, but it's a beautiful sunny day. And I'm finally going to get around to doing an engine detailing video. And for that, I'm going to be using my 1990 Cadillac Brougham. It's a long-awaited video, and also I've gotten so many requests for it in private messages, and if you go to my channel page in the comments, um, there's also a few of my subscribers that have left comments requesting this video as well. So in this video, you're going to learn that how to clean your engine, detail it well, and make it look brand new. And these are some of the products that will be used in this video. And as far as the engine brake goes, only use it on engines that have a lot of built-up grease and grime. You may have an older engine, or you may have an engine that has leaked oil in the past, and it's built up really bad towards the bottom of the block or on the suspension parts themselves. In that case, you would use it in those areas only. But first, you must use something like a putty knife or a flathead screwdriver. Take off everything you can in a dry form that way. And then when you get to the actual surface, then you soak it with engine bright or any similar generic product. Let that penetrate and then with a wire brush go over the block areas or any other metal parts where you have applied it and then pressure wash it off. Do not apply it on any other parts of the engine and certainly do not apply it on rubber hoses or any black plastic parts and you'll see why in this video. Don't be confused because I do not use engine bright on a regular basis to clean my engines and in this video it will not be used at all. And these are really the two main items to use to get that real shine, that nice new look when you're done. The combination of the dish soap and the lubricant. Believe it or not, you may think that Armor All or engine detail or spray such as CD2 is what really does the trick, but it's not. Because the CD2 has a tendency to wear off quickly and the armor all tends to build up too much dust. I use as an example the 307 in my Buick. For areas such as this that you're not going to be soaking that we're, um, you're going to end up covering, do this part before you start working on the rest of the engine. You get your lubricant, spray it on here around the alternator brackets and stuff like this that tend to build up with grease and grime. And use the metal brush. And just work into the lubricant you put on there WD-40 or any generic lubricant will do fine and then you get your carburetor spray and just spray it off and you see the big difference it made here where I did nothing and then you see here just how magnificently clean that it's left there after I put the carburetor spray on it if you just put the carburetor spray directly on there, you will not get that result. You really have to work at it and use your wire brush or cotton cloth and get into the nooks and crannies there. And that is the best result. And I'm going to show it to you one more time here on the smog pump. I'll just show you the before and after for the sake of time. Okay, it took me about two minutes or so, wire brush, and just using the lubricant. Now you get the carburetor spray and just power that off. And there you go, there's the result. And uh, anytime you use any type of strong sprays that way, make sure that you use uh, goggles, a mask, and the use of, do it in outside in a well-ventilated area. That way that prevents any risk of anything getting in your eyes or inhaling anything because these are, the carburetor spray is a strong chemical. And as you guys know, I really abstain from using harsh chemicals as much as I can. Just in certain instances, I do use them, and this is one of them. Now back to my Cadillac Brougham here. After you've gone through some details using the lubricant and cleaning areas that you're not going to be getting too wet when you wash your engine, make sure that you cover things like the alternator, the wiring harness on your air conditioning compressor, your battery and battery terminals, you don't ever want corrosion on those if you really want sure starts. Your wiring harnesses you see such as these, because if those get wet, corrosion can tend to begin. 
things can malfunction or short out. And electrical problems are so difficult to repair or even find sometimes, you should avoid those as much as possible. Your distributor cap and the connections on top. But it doesn't matter if this part of your spark plug wires do get wet. It does not matter. When it comes to any areas such as these, you don't have to worry about them getting wet. As long as you're doing it once the engine is cooled down, there will not be any problems. If you have any doubt about getting something wet or protecting something, do not hesitate to ask me by commenting on this video. If you're in doubt, just ask. Also wetting things like your belts, pulleys, um, the, fan, the fan clutch, fan housing, anything like that, there is no problem in getting that wet. The point is, when you're doing something like this, just use common sense. And when you start covering things, they don't have to be airtight seals. Just make sure that you cover the general area. Being as I'll be working on my car, I don't get overly picky about covering every last detail. If a little water gets on some of those things I mentioned, don't sweat it. It's not a huge deal. When it comes to covering things, you can simply use plastic grocery bags such as I did here over the alternator. So that way when you start putting the hose and wetting things around here, there's no water that will directly fall into the alternator. And you don't have to worry about giving it an, all, an airtight fit. You can notice as I did here, I didn't worry about that and cover the bottom all the way around because it's simply just not necessary. Also, plastic saran wrap can be useful for other areas like wires or things like that that are not very easily covered by a bag. After you've taken the necessary precautions, just go ahead and mist over the engine a little bit. And just soak things around that way. And when you get to areas down here where grease and grime can tend to build up or anything like that, then put it on a higher pressure such as that. And make sure you keep your air cleaner housing over your carburetor or if you have something like this like I have is a TBI, throttle body injection. Just make sure you keep the air cleaner housing on and that will do just fine for that area. You can also apply uh, water pressure to the top of the intake and around here and as long as your air cleaner housing is on, there's also no problem in doing that as well. The next step, get your brush, which is the easiest thing. These brushes are really handy, as you can see, I use them in a lot of my videos. These general areas here, these flatter surfaces. And this soap is going to cut all that grease and grime and dirt that's on the engine area here, on the compartment. I bought these in Yuma, Arizona. They're only a dollar. I bought them last summer. We'll go over the, ho the radiator hose top of the... Uh, fluid containers, top of the, the air cleaner housing, do the same thing. And everywhere you can reach with a brush, make sure that you do that. If you have any doubts of my style of doing it, one thing to remember is I've been cleaning the engines like this for over 10 years and never had a problem. Now get a cotton cloth, soak it, get a little more soap, use a lot of it. So get the cloth and get these hard to reach areas and literally it can be a little tedious take your time but just go over all the nooks and crannies and this is sometimes is what really sets off the engine when you have really taken the time and patiently gone through every component every area like this and really cleaned it well and this is a common area where there's oil that will develop because of oil blow and stuff in the engine and the dish soap works wonders here. Just with a rag or a brush, just go right into it. And it'll just leave it bright white like the way it's supposed to be. I have to re-emphasize again, the step of using the dish soap on rubber hoses such as this really will be one of the key factors to give you that newness shine that you're looking for at the end. And don't worry about how long it might take you. Just take your time to go in through all the nooks and crannies because when you're done and you've taken your time doing all of that and once you look at the engine when it's done that's when you're really going to be quite pleased with yourself that you took the time to do all of those details now you're ready for the rinse after you're done rinsing it remove all the areas you've covered as you see just putting that bag over the general area that's as dry as we need it to be 
Once you're done rinsing your engine and engine compartment thoroughly, go ahead and start your car and that will allow the drying process to be faster. Also the air pressure coming out of the fan will blow some of that water out of there as well. Just make sure you don't run it too long because we don't want the engine to get too warm because we still got to put the final touches on it and really make it stand out. Below five minutes is best. After you're done cleaning your engine and rinsing it and drying it thoroughly and it is important that all the water is out of the nooks and crannies and areas like that when you do this process. If you feel like you have to drive the car then come back to it a couple hours later that's fine as well. Add some spray lubricant and this is not a must but it really does help your belts and pulleys and just really sets it off better. And it's not just for show, it also really is good for the pulleys and stuff to do that. Start the car, run it for 30 seconds or less, and then shut it off. There'll be a little residue and overspray that you got around the fan shroud and the black hoses and stuff, and that's great because we're gonna actually use that overspray. And actually you can add a little more to the towel this way and just go over it, go over these plastic areas. And this is another key factor to have a lasting shine on your engine and hoses and things like that. On the radiator hoses, all over the black areas like this. Add fresh lubricant to the hood hinges, top and bottom. And directly on the towel, add a very decent amount of, and don't be afraid of the lubricant. And any excess spraying you got around here, you're going to use that right into the plastic as well. Around the metals. And use it down in this area. And the lubricant really has a longer lasting shine to it than what the Armor All does. And it doesn't build up all that dust as long as you wipe off the excess. Armor All has a tendency to build up way too much dust. On the radiator shroud, just a very minimal amount of armor all, combined with the excess of the lubricant, wipe off the excess. And now for the air cleaner housing, it really responds well to a little armor all. Spray it right on top directly. And with your cloth, rub the most of the excess off. And if you use a dry cloth, a different one, and buff it with that, you can just really get that shine out. Just like that. Or, since it is a painted surface, you can also apply a thin coat of liquid carnauba wax or your favorite paste wax. Another benefit of using the lubricant is it not only cleans and add some shine to things but it also protects and prevents corrosion and when you do after a long time have more buildup of grease or grime or dust or anything because it has that coating of lubricant it's very easy just to wipe off the next time around after washing it with the dish soap rinsing and drying and then applying a coating of lubricant and using the armor very sparingly this is the result you should have Granted, if you have a very old car or a car with a lot of miles or a lot of corrosion, well, there's certain things you will not be able to overcome. But as long as you follow the steps I've given you in this video, you will still dramatically improve the appearance of any engine. And there you have it. Thank you for joining me on yet another how-to video. And remember, Bogar is not just a name, 
it's a standard.